So you're scheduled for a C-section, but you have no idea what to expect. I'm gonna walk you through it step by step from entering the hospital doors all the way up till you have your little baby in your arms. Stay tuned. I'm Tina B. I'm a labor and delivery nurse and a mom of four, and I'm here to help you to put your best bump forward. Lots of people have their babies by cesarean section, around 31.8% of people in the United States. And for one reason or another, either by personal choice or there's a low-lying placenta or the baby is not positioned optimally for a vaginal delivery or you've had a c-section before and you want to have another c-section there's tons of reasons but still you might be foggy on the details of what to expect so we're going to go through it step by step the first thing that'll likely happen even before your admission to hospital is going to be talking with a staff member. It's called pre-admission. This staff member is going to talk to you on the phone or in person, and they're going to go over all of the information that you need to know before you come into hospital to have your baby. Now there's going to be a lot of rapid fire information. So my best advice to you is to have a notepad with you when you talk to the staff member so that you can write all the information down so you don't forget anything. And you can write down any questions that you might have. We're going to go over things like when you should stop eating or drinking, when you should come to the hospital, what you should bring, what you should wear, information that is pertinent to your surgery. Then it'll be the day of your surgery. You're going to check into whatever unit you're supposed to arrive on at the scheduled time of arrival. Now, this arrival time is going to be about an hour and a half to two hours before your surgery so that we have all the time we need to get you operating room ready. And then a word about your scheduled surgery time. This is a loosely scheduled time because the obstetrical unit, it does function much like an emergency department. So if something is happening where somebody needs an emergency C-section, that is going to push the time of your surgery to later in the day so please just be aware of that when you come to the unit you're going to come with as little as you can come with your keys your wallet and the clothes that you're wearing and that's pretty well it because you're going to have lots of time following your surgery where you can go to the vehicle and you can pick up your big hospital bag and your baby bag and you don't need a car seat for baby until you're ready to leave the hospital so that can also stay in the car when you come for your surgery you're gonna be greeted on the unit by a member of the surgical team. They're gonna take you into a room and get you ready for the operating room. They're gonna give you a gown to change into and everything underneath comes off right down to your birthday suit. Now a word about personalized gowns. I know a lot of people do like to bring their own labor and delivery gowns from home. This is probably one area of labor and delivery that you might get a bit of pushback about wearing it. And that's because in the operating room, we like to keep things sterile and as controlled as possible. And we know that the hospital issued scrubs that we're wearing well, they're up to code for sterility and for cleanliness, but we can't say the same about your items from home, even though they're probably just fine. So a hospital gown for you and your partner gets to play dress up as well. They'll be given a pair of hospital issued scrubs to change into. Once you're all changed and ready, I'm going to gather some admission information that I need to know before we go to the operating room. Things like your health history. Do you have any pre-existing conditions? Do you have any allergies to medications? When was the last time you ate or drank? Now, eating and drinking is going to vary site to site. At the site that I work with, we're going to have asked that you do not eat any solid foods eight hours or less before the surgery and that you don't drink any clear fluids three hours or less before the surgery. And that is to ensure that your stomach is pretty close to empty at the time of your surgery and that's going to decrease your risk of aspiration or vomiting during the surgery. With a health history complete, I'm going to now physically check in on you and baby. For yourself, I'm going to do a full set of maternal vital signs. I want to know your blood pressure, your pulse rate, your oxygen rate, your breathing rate, and your temperature. And I also want to know how are you feeling? And is baby moving well? And are you leaking anything from the vagina? Are you experiencing any pains or contractions? Or do you have any bleeding from the vagina? With you complete, I'm going to check in on baby. And I am going to do one minute of auscultating baby's fetal heart rate. I might either going to do it with the ultrasound that's attached to the fetal heart rate monitor in the room or I'm going to use a handheld Doppler. Either way, I'm going to be listening for one minute to count the rate and to listen for regularity and to make sure I don't hear any dips in baby's heart rate. If both of these things are good, we can move on to making sure we have everything in line to get you OR ready. 
I'm going to be putting an IV in your hand or your arm and giving you lots of warm IV fluids in preparation for your surgery. And if you haven't done so already, I'm going to treat you to a little spa treatment and do some shave prep down below. I'm going to remove the hair from the belly button to the top of the labia, and that's to help with infection control, making sure that the dressing seals all the way around your incision, and it's going to hurt a little bit less coming off after your surgery as well. And then here is where we're going to do any individual items that pertain to your clinical situation. So if you have a low-lying placenta, or you have a bleeding disorder, we might do some extra blood work. Or if your C-section is because your baby is breached, we're also going to do a bedside ultrasound to make sure that that baby is still breached because I have seen them flip around. It's pretty crazy, but it can happen. And then once all of that prep is done, I'm also going to hand you both hair covers because we do need to cover our hair before we go in the operating room. You likely already have a mask on just based on hospital policy. And I'm also going to be giving you and your partner some shoe covers to cover up your outdoor shoes. And then you are completely ready to go. Once you're ready to go, we're going to do a safe surgical checklist. This can be done in pre-op or it can be done once you are sitting on the table before your spinal has gone in, but it's going to include a team of people, myself, yourself, your provider, and the anesthesiologist. And we are going to verify your identity and your birthday. We're going to verify any allergies that you have. We're going to check into the last time that you ate or drank. And then importantly, we are going to make sure that there is a consent form signed by yourself. Now this consent form should have been signed once you had a chance to ask any questions and we're given all the information around your surgery so that you could give informed consent for this surgery. And your consent can either be specifically for a cesarean section, or it can also be for a cesarean section with a tubal ligation if you've discussed it with your doctor and you are sure that you are all done having babies. Now each site has a different setup for their operating facilities. The site that I'm at, we walk into a generalized operating area. On one side is the recovery area and on the other side are the operating theaters. You and me and the team are going to go into the operating room and your partner or support person is going to stay out of the operating room until you are ready for your surgery to begin. Once you're in the operating room, you're probably going to find it pretty chilly in there. We keep it pretty cold. We'll warm you up with some IV fluids and some warm blankets the best we can. And you're going to put your bare bum on the operating room table with your back to the anesthetist. This is where your spinal is going to be put in. They are going to clean your back with some swabs. These are going to feel really cold too. I apologize in advance. And I'm going to put a blood pressure cuff on your arm so we know what your blood pressure is before that spinal goes in. Now heads up here as well, blood pressure cuffs in operating rooms, they squeeze your arm really, really tight. So just be aware of that. Once we are ready to go and the anesthetist has your back all cleaned up, we're going to get you in position for the spinal, which is the same positioning as with an epidural. And I'll link a video here for you all about epidurals and what to expect there. They are going to do your spinal. And once your spinal is in, your legs and your bum, they're going to go warm and tingly and numb pretty quickly. So we are going to work as a team to get you laying down on the operating table pretty efficiently after that spinal is in. Once you're laying flat on the operating room table, we're going to come at you from both ends and do things that we need to do to get you ready for your surgery as that spinal continues to take effect and you get number and number from about the breast down. On the top half, you already have a blood pressure cuff on. We're also going to put some leads on your chest, uh, either three or five of them. And these stickers on your chest are going to tell the anesthetist what your heart rate and your heart rhythm is. We're also going to put an oxygen saturation monitor on your finger. And then the anesthetist is going to take care of you on the top half. It's important to let the anesthetist know if you're feeling any sort of way during the surgery, if you're feeling lightheaded or dizzy or nauseated, these are signs that likely your blood pressure is dipping low, which can be expected with the spinal but if you let them know that you're feeling pretty yucky they will help you out with some medications very very quickly to get you feeling better now that's the top half on the bottom half we're going to put in that foley catheter for you but don't worry you will not feel this because your spinal is already taking effect on the lower half of your body this catheter is going to get attached to a urinary drainage bag so that your bladder is continuously emptying throughout the surgery now we are going to prep your tummy. Every site might use a little bit of a different solution. At my site, it is an iodine prep solution and it makes your belly look pretty, pretty orange. This is okay. Don't try to wash it off. It's going to stay on your skin upwards of five to seven days. It's going to provide you with an antimicrobial effect all the way through those five to seven days. So it's okay. It's going to look a little bit like the worst tan you've ever had. And then once the iodine prep is done, we are going to straighten your legs and we are going to put a seatbelt over top of them to keep them safe so that they don't happen to roll off during the surgery, which could cause injuries if that were to happen. And then here's the awkward part where we have to let that prep solution dry for about three minutes. So there you are naked with your belly out, just waiting for the solution to dry. And we're all making awkward conversation. I promise it's going to be totally okay. 
Now, during this awkward amount of time where we're waiting for the prep solution to dry, you're gonna see more and more people coming in for the birthday party. You're gonna have your provider and their assistant. They are gonna come in and get ready. There's already going to be a scrub nurse there who's going to assist them to get gowned and gloved. And you're also going to have a couple of other nurses in the room with you, myself included. And then you're gonna have a team come in for the baby. This is likely going to include a respiratory therapist and a nurse from the NICU, and they are going to be at the baby warmer, which will be in the operating room with you. If this is a higher risk situation, like they have seen issues with baby's heart rate or there's meconium in the fluid, there might also be a neonatologist in the room at the warmer with that team for you. So it's gonna get crowded, lots of people there to support you and to celebrate with you. Once the prep solution is dry, they're gonna put up the big surgical drape. Now it could be different colors, it could be see-through, I can't see for sure what it's gonna be, but this surgical drape makes it so that the side that you and the anesthetist are on is not sterile and the side that the surgeons are on is the sterile field. Once they have the drape up, they are gonna get the rest of the things set up and then they're gonna test your skin around the incision line with something quite sharp. That's to make sure that your spinal is working really, really well because you should not feel sharp or cold. You are, however, and I want you to know this, very important, going to feel pressure and pulling. And that's important to know because there are points in the surgery where there's quite intense pulling. And then with the birth of your baby, even though there is an incision there, the people that are working in the surgical field actually have to work to physically deliver your baby out through that incision. And during that time, you're actually going to have somebody on top of your chest, on the top of your uterus, pushing the baby downward. So you're going to feel intense amounts of pressure. Just be aware that the spinal does not take that away. But once they know that you can't feel pain, they know they're ready to go and your partner will come in to be with you at the bedside. Within 10 minutes of your surgery starting, quicker if it's an emergency, you're actually going to see your baby. One of the providers will walk by with the baby to say a quick hello on the way to the warmer. And then once baby's at the warmer, your partner or support person is more than welcome to go over and watch what's happening and take lots and lots of pictures to gather all of those important memories. At the warmer, they're gonna dry baby and stimulate baby lightly, give baby more support if baby's having any issues transitioning. They'll also weigh baby at the warmer. And then when they take baby out of your uterus, they actually leave the umbilical cord quite long in case it's needed for resuscitation. If baby is doing well, they will likely offer to your partner or support person to go ahead and trim the cord down to the right size. And in this way, it's sort of like they're cutting the cord. And once all of that is done and baby's band is on, then we can do skin to skin while the operation is finished. Now, depending on the site, skin to skin might be offered to yourself while the operation is still ongoing. And if that is not possible due to safety or staffing concerns, then hopefully at your site, they will allow your partner to do skin to skin at your bedside. And in this way, you can see baby and touch baby and kiss baby and talk to baby while the surgery is finishing up. The whole procedure is done in around 40 to 45 minutes, at which point the drape will come down and we're gonna cover the incision with a sterile dressing. Once your incision is all covered, we are going to open your legs and do a fundal check. During this fundal check, we are squeezing down on the top of the uterus to feel how firm the uterus is, where it is in your abdomen, and how much blood is coming out and what does that blood look like. And yes, you will still bleed from the vagina with a C-section. Once that is done, we're going to insert some pain medications up into the rectum. This is to make sure that you have some form of pain control on board when the spinal starts to wear off. And with all that complete, we're gonna turn you side to side to get you cleaned up before moving you over to your recovery bed. Once you are in the recovery area, if you're not already skin to skin with baby, we're gonna make sure we get baby on your skin right away. And then we're gonna connect you to a monitoring system in the recovery area. And we do quite a few checks of things every 10 minutes in recovery. The things that we are checking are your vital signs, your blood pressure, your pulse, your oxygen, and your heart rate. We are also going to check, do you have nausea? Do you have pain? Is your dressing dry or is it oozing? Is your incision looking clean? How does that uterus feel? How much blood is coming out? Can you feel anything? How numb are you and how high up does that numbing go? And how is your urinary output? In recovery, you are also welcome to do early breastfeeding if you're choosing to breastfeed. That is also an option in recovery and it's lovely to see. Once you've met all the discharge criteria and you don't have excessive bleeding and your spinal numbing has come down to a nice level and you're not having too much pain, we're gonna actually transfer you over to postpartum. And in postpartum, you're gonna be spending two to three days recovering from your C-section before you get to head home with your new family. Okay, that was a lot of talking, but a cesarean section is a major abdominal surgery and a big team effort. So I hope that this video has either eased some worries for you or just made you feel overall more prepared for your upcoming cesarean section. Congratulations in advance. Give this one a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.